please turn off your camera and don't display your name. Um, if you don't mind, uh, and we really encourage you to do it, please reveal your full name uh, uh, properly so we know who you are. Uh, please mute your microphone while you're not participating actively. And of course, you're more than welcome to activate, uh, to be, to actively participate. Do it uh, using the chat box. Uh, we'll try uh, to, to manage it uh, uh, nicely today with without the participation of uh, Jean Maurice. He usually, he usually is here to help. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna look on the chat while uh, we're gonna listen to the presentation, having conversations. And I dare asking you as always to keep uh, your camera on. No pressure here. I know some people don't like to do it, but part of what we do here is just uh, the question of network and it just feels better. So please open the camera if you don't mind. If you do mind, never mind. That's fine as well. Let's continue to the next one, please. Which I guess it's the code of conduct usually. Yeah, that's code of conduct. So more housekeeping. Um, uh, but this this is essential for us for the avoidance of any uh, uh, misbehavior. We believe that our discussion should be conducted in a, what we call a free competition environment. So we strictly uh, adopt uh, a code of conduct of the association in all the interactions, if whether it's the board uh, meetings or uh, the forums, the, the working group sessions, uh, events, personal, professional conversations, simply saying we don't talk about commercial matters. No pricing, no clients, no splitting the market, no commercial data, nothing. Nothing here goes, uh, and we're and we're not. Uh, you are not allowed, and we're not allowed to to talk of any of these confidential information uh, topics. Uh, this way, we concentrate on what we are really here for, is to promote together the sustainable irrigation in Europe. So, thank you for for respecting this. Next, please. Hmm. The menu of today. So just a second, let me let me in here. So for for today, actually today we're gonna dedicate the the uh, our almost two hours I guess it's gonna be uh, to landscape irrigation. Uh, hopefully we will dive into a very interesting and rich environmental friendly city water discussions uh, throughout uh, the sessions we're gonna have and the discussions. We we'll start with a short introduction from my side. Uh, on the ongoing of the association, quick quick update, just uh, in titles, what is it that we're doing uh, these days, and then uh, Fleur will uh, welcome the new members. I think we have three new members today. Uh, yeah. Two of them are participating uh, actively today, and the third one, uh, I think that they ask uh, to be to be presented next time, Otek, if I'm not mistaken. So we're gonna you're gonna you're gonna meet the the new um, uh, the new members who joined us recently. Then we move to the first uh, guest speaker. First topic, uh, the main topic of the forum uh, will be presented by uh, Nicola Grillo. Grillo, I think I'm pronouncing your name correctly. I'm sorry, that's an Italian name, I guess. Yeah, yeah there's, there's an Italian way of saying it, but um, since uh, since I've always lived in France, it's uh, I always heard Griglio, so <laughs> I'll go Griglio. with both. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so nice meeting you, and you're coming you. from the Source Urbaine. If it's a French uh, version, so it's also Ruben, and uh, we you will talk about spring rain water in urban areas. I've seen, yeah, I've seen your presentation. Looking forward to uh, to listen more and to see what you brought today uh, to us today. And then we're gonna move. Usually we uh, we have a topic of innovation of technology where we uh, each forum we invite one of our members to uh, to share with us uh, uh, technologies and innovation that uh, that are interesting for everyone. Uh, this time we invite uh, Dorothy. I think that you're here, Dorothy. I haven't seen you yet. Yes, I'm here. Yes, hi, hello, hello. <laughs> Great seeing you. Dorothy Zulsbacher, right? I'm not yes. mistaken here. Okay, <laughs> that was an easy one. <laughs> so so, uh, so Dorothy will uh, will present uh, Light Soil. She's coming from the company Light Soil and she, she will present the textile water storage and under, underground irrigation system. So it's all about the city this time. Uh, which is quite exciting. Uh, at this point, it will take. We will go to the open session of the Q and A at the end. Uh, open microphone session. You may comment freely, ask questions, comments. Uh, we love to hear what you think. Uh, after all, we are here for the members and for you. Uh, so please, uh, please uh, be active and join us in the conversation. And uh, feel free to ask and to comment. 
Um, that's it for the menu, I think, right? So um, next slide, please. Which is the, ah, what's new in the association? So um, I, I chose uh, to share with you, really, it's, uh, like briefly, a few topics of interest uh, of this, uh, that we're dealing with in association the last uh, few months. I'm trying to summarize our activities. So we, we begin, as most of the last, of like previous times as well, we begin with taxonomy. Most of you probably know that the taxonomy remains one of the most promising uh, topics to our sector, according to our understanding, of course, uh, due to the to the potential of the, the potential impact of, of the on the future of the irrigation. Uh, so it's essential that the irrigation sector together with the humble help of the European Irrigation Association, will continue uh, providing relevant in inputs uh, to the sustainability financing uh, uh, platform of, uh, of the EU, of, the, of Europe. A successful implementation of this topic, uh, this, I uh, would say, line of uh, development, will impact not only the growth of our sector uh, in terms of uh, quality and quantity, but it will create um, a significant impact on on water management in Europe. So we're quite excited about about this topic. Um, we we continue our engagement to keep the topic uh, hot and uh, and relevant uh, with uh, with an engagement plan, on ongoing communication campaign that that we were doing. We're publishing constantly in a continuous way uh, publications around uh, around taxonomy. To continue promote the this uh, the, the the policy of the of the paper that we've uh, submitted to the EU Commission uh, last year, and to continue to keep it uh, uh, on the table. Uh, and in parallel, uh, what we've managed to 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 begin with is to organize a roundtable, a roundtable managed together with our partner, with uh, the European House of Ambrosetti also helped us with the creation of the policy paper um, to it it will be probably in january in brussels uh, in a great moment to talk about which will be in our, our view great moment to talk about irrigation uh, because the eu commission is now getting into the roles um, and there is a new promising some of you may know that uh, the very exciting news about uh, the, this new role of uh, water resilience uh, commissioner, uh, this uh, commissioner will be uh, for the first time will be specifically responsible for the for the environment, uh, water resilience, uh, the competitive uh, uh, circular economy, and it gives us a lot of uh, confidence, proving that water, together with uh, with the new challenges of the Blue Deal and the Water Resilience Europe and so and so on. Not only this is is finally uh, on the global agenda, so we're quite excited about this roundtable. It will be the first event on irrigation uh, in this in, like in this format. It will be a mix, we guess, of a real like uh, and virtual and real uh, attendance. It will be in Brussels, and stay tuned. We're gonna keep on updating you with uh, with uh, with exact uh, details. Once everything will be will be arranged and ready, uh, so uh, this this is what we're doing under the working group one, which is sustainable agriculture. Moving to the second working group, which is the urban uh, landscape. So we do see a new a new energy uh, with a lot of activities now coming with also with the participation of the new leader of the group. I'm not sure if Michael Fayot is with us today uh, from Urbasans. Uh, he took a uh, responsibility uh, together with the team. It is involved in the urban landscape to continue pushing this. Now they are dealing with uh, identifying, focusing on efficiency, uh, on uh, of the term of efficiency in the irrigation, in the urban applications, in the urban landscape, whether it's um, a definition, description, uh, 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 technical pre prescriptions, and so on and so forth. So this is something that we are dealing with uh, currently. And we see we see good uh, good vibe good uh, good energy there. Uh, the working group of the training and education, which is led by Damir uh, Sismek from um, uh, Inaqua, uh, is working on on a module of training for landscape auditors course. 
we're gonna the, the aim is to provide a training course uh, around the landscape uh it will be in well there, there are still discussions about the format and how it's going to be and so on and so forth uh but the idea is to have a, to have a module the a training the, the by modules and that will will be presented to the members and to everyone uh, that is interested in the market um another point uh, that we're dealing with is the secretariat services uh so uh, we, we know that we do have um uh, alienor today who is progressively taking more and more responsibilities and place in the life of the association uh, you may know and see and maybe you, you're also part of the viewers of the services that we're providing today to members uh, which is the monthly newsletter with updates on uh, on water uh, subjects in europe uh, so more and more of uh, interventions of this kind from uh, alieno um the fifth point on the on the roadmap that's quite a tricky one because uh, and we're now discussing in the board of directors uh, on future plans of the association and uh, and uh, what should be the operating model of the association. Uh, uh, it's true the association is growing and is developing together with the opportunity that I would say in parallel goes with opportunity for sustainable irrigation in Europe. So we keep on moving forward and we need to think about how we we serve best our members in the future in the coming uh, coming three years or if, uh, or if you like five years we decided to uh, on the already on the five pillars that the points of interest for the for the members this was already decided now we are considering uh, the right like we need to choose between different modes of revenues and the needed resources in parallel so the idea is that we're going to move forward um with uh, the egg and the chicken as you say with resources together with uh, with income sources that will allow us to to run faster and to and to serve the demand of the sector as as we hear it and as we see it so uh, this will be published i guess at uh, the beginning of the year and the last point last but uh, not least as we like to say is the EMA exhibition. EMA is, uh, for, uh, for those of you who don't know EMA, I guess all of you know EMA, but this is like international exhibition of agriculture and gardening in uh, Bologna, Italy. And um, for us, it's it's not only one of the most important events, uh, but it's also a, a great opportunity to meet. Uh, so we have our uh, gathering cocktail, uh, put it in your, in, in your calendars if you're gonna be there. Uh, I wouldn't fly just for this, but if you're there, make the effort and join us because this is a great, it's a great, usually we have a, a great friendly conviviality moment together. Uh, uh, it's good for the network, it's good for the, for the to, to meet each other. That's going to be on the 7th of November, if I'm not mistaken, at 5 p.m., right? Like Flo. Thursday, 7th November, yes. 5 p.m., in the venue yeah. of the exhibition. I don't know exactly where, but we we're gonna we're gonna publish uh, uh, the community the relevant communication around this. Mm. Um, we also this year we're also gonna have our own booth for the association, courtesy of uh, Yuri Gazette. Thank you for this, dedicated uh, to 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 promote uh, the brands of our members, uh, the places of our uh, of our members in the in the ecosystem and irrigation system. And the important place of the irrigation sector in the agricultural and landscape markets. So these are uh, now we have uh, we're going to have a booth. We already have all our board members uh, volunteering uh, to to share time. So we have like a schedule who's going to be there and so on. So we try to be to always be presented there. Uh, please uh, come and uh, say hello and have a coffee. Uh, and uh, I think that this will be this will be also a great opportunity uh, to get to know each other and to enlarge the scope of the of the this network that we're building. So that's it from my side. I think that uh, uh, these are the main points uh, we're dealing. We keep we will keep on updating you, uh, members and non-members, if you like, if you're part of the list of the of the association uh, of the data that we have in association. And uh, let's uh, let's move to the to the main topic of today. 
unless someone would like to comment or to have any question, please raise your hand or just open your microphone. Um, so okay. you can do it later if, like, if like. Okay, I, I, I go on with the, the second part of the forum, which is a welcome to new members. Um, so since our latest uh, forum, uh, three new members uh, join us. And uh, today we are counting 82 members. Uh, sorry. So uh, the first one is uh, the company OTEC. Uh, it's a uh, French center pivot manufacturer. Uh, but uh, Yvan Mirabal uh, could not participate in the forum and uh, he asked uh, me the opportunity to introduce him himself at uh, our next forum, so probably in January. So, so uh, let's move to the next one, which is uh, the company HSTI, and uh, Flavien Lepin will, uh, will will tell us a few words about about uh, him and HSTI if he's here. Flavien. Ah. Sorry, I was in mute. My bad. Ah, okay. <laughs> Hi everyone. Uh, hi. Thanks, Fleur. Thanks, Moshi, for for the intros. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, nice to meet you, Flavin Espin. Uh, I work for HSTI, a soil moisture company. So we uh, manufacture soil moisture probes for mainly agriculture, but also for landscaping um, here locally in Aix-en-Provence. Uh, that's where we're based. So we've been uh, manufacturing uh, since 2014, and uh, but we now manufacture here in France. We are a small team of nine people locally, uh, and the uh, our specialty is that we manufacture probes from 10 centimeters all the way down to 1.5 meter, and uh, you can custom build the probes. Uh, basically, you can uh, add as many sensors as you want. Uh, we offer a five-year warranty on the product. Uh, we are able to offer a solution, so meaning the probe, the telemetry, and the software, or just the probe as uh, based on your on your needs and uh yeah and i say we we base in x and but we uh, distribute the product all over the world so we've got different uh, distributors and um yeah across the globe and that's uh, that's what we do okay okay thank you, thank you flavien uh, and the third one is uh, the company Tarantini Giunti. Uh, so I ask, uh, I am going to ask to Mario, Maria Antonietta Tarantini, uh, if she's here, to to tell us a few words about uh, her company. Maria Antonietta. Okay. Are you here, Maria Antonietta? She told me she was going to participate. Okay, it looks like she's not here. I don't see her in the in the list of the participants. So I will say a few words about uh, about Tarantini Giunti. Uh, so it is uh, an Italian uh, company based uh, in the south of Italy in uh, Genosa, and it is specialized in the manufacture and installation of irrigation systems pumping systems, universal hydraulics couplings, and polyethylene steels. And uh, the company caters to sectors such as aqueduct, industry, irrigation, and gardening. So this, this is it about the, the new members. So we wish them a warm welcome. And, uh, and this is the map of our members today. 82 members and it's a uh, very different companies manufacturers but also installers distributors researchers consultants uh, okay so so now we will move to the next part of the of the forum with our invited speaker nicola griglio uh, who is going to do a presentation about when water reuse in the green cities uh, so, Nicola, you want to show the screen, huh? You want to, you prefer to show your slides. That's it. Um, if that works better, yeah, I, I will try okay. to share my screen. If uh... I stop sharing, my all right. Screen. Okay. That's an opportunity just to ask everyone to to mute their microphones if they can, beside yourself, of course. Uh, <laughs> uh, because there is a noise. I think Daniel, there is a noise from your side. 
So I appreciate if you can mute it. Thank you. Um, yeah, are you are you all uh, seeing my screen already? Or um, yeah, okay, perfect. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank you, uh, thank you all for this invitation and for this opportunity to speak uh, on behalf of uh, Source Urbain. So, as you guessed it, uh, we are a French-based company. Uh, but what is more interesting about this event and especially this opportunity to exchange with uh, all of you, uh, all of you uh, experts, is that we uh, I'll be presenting pretty much the philosophy and why uh, we've developed this uh, rainwater usage system uh, in urban environments uh, within Source Urban. But more importantly, um, I want to showcase a few examples, uh, examples that have already been deployed, that have been tested and are still being tested and actually uh, are part of an inspiration for, um, for new uh, usage and new uh, ways of doing things in, in terms of uh, water management in urban uh, areas. Huh? Um, without going into the details of uh, what is actually going around in uh, in our environment in terms of climate change and everything, um, it is an evidence that for for many people, uh, rather the large public or even um, uh, the politics, that natural resources and uh, vegetation has to be reintroduced in our urban environments, uh, rather if it's for uh, cooling effects or for just generally appreciating more our ur urban environments, it is it has become a necessity. So in terms of rainwater management, uh, there has been the sewage systems that have been existing for so many years now. And every time uh, th th there is a construction works, it has a certain dimension which actually makes it um, outdated because of the effects of climate change. Every time we talk about natural uh, phenomenon, they are more and more extreme, uh, rather if it's heat waves or uh, cold waves, or even when we talk about rain um, episodes, we have more and more episodes of uh, large and extreme uh, w water pouring down and uh, having this, uh, this uh, devastating effects. Or on the other hand, we have more and more periods of droughts where we're missing this resource and even um, we have to drain into our uh, vital uh, uh, stock of, of, this, uh, of this resource. So just, uh, just coming back to this vegetation um, aspect of uh, urban management, more and more we have tried to reintroduce green into our cities. Uh, there had been a, a big trend about having a front of buildings vegetated. Um, now there, uh, we realize that it's a lot of maintenance, it requires a lot of watering, uh, and if you miss out uh, a period of, of, of maintenance, uh, plants will actually dry off and uh, die and then it has uh, a really strong negative image in terms of um, in terms of building and management. So more and more, at least this is the case uh, for uh, the environments we see in, in Europe. Maybe it's also the case. I hope it's also the case in other parts of the of the world. Um, green roofs has be has become a trend more and more uh, in uh, the laws. We also reintroduce the possibility uh, of of using the green roof as a, a positive impact on rainwater management in terms of storage uh, and disconnection of the sewage system. And uh, just to have a few examples, because I'll be going through one of uh, some of the examples later on, cities have been trying to reintroduce water management in a new natural uh, and eco-friendly uh, way. And more and more they have positioned themselves as being the sponge city. So the image of a city that is able to absorb and reuse water locally instead of getting rid of it, like it's always been the case in uh, in, in urban developments for so many years. Huh? Uh, it's quite new today that having um, a puddle of water after a rain episode is acceptable. It's for so long it's been a city as something negative and we wanted to get rid of it. So the whole idea, and this is one of the basis of, uh, of our uh, strategy and our philosophy, is to use um, the urban environment as a basis uh, to reuse rainwater in uh, more uh, eco-friendly uh, solutions. So whenever we, we talk about a city, we can talk about uh, artificial surfaces, areas such as roofs, um, 
uh, just the sidewalk or even the driveways, all of these are surfaces that can be exploited into uh, reintroducing a new way of irrigating systems and irrig irrigating uh, uh, plants, trees, uh, parks in, uh, in our everyday lives. Uh, the whole idea also is to, I mean, one of the um, observations that for so long we use drinkable water to um, to water plants, to, you know, uh, I mean, th there are so many examples like that one, uh, to clean out the cars, to clean the, the street, um, uh, to flush the toilet. So the whole idea here is use a resource that is not necessarily meant for our consumption, but can be used for more uh, sustainable uh, usage. And this is why reintroducing vegetation also has an impact on regulations and laws, because as of today, we realize that um, uh, nature is able to, uh, to disconnect water from, from uh, sewage systems and is able to maintain a good health in terms of biodiversity and uh, well, uh, good aspect, if I may put it that way, uh, of the city. Just as an example, and I know, again, I will not be going through all of them and uh, I'm doing it on purpose because in case there are some questions afterwards, we'll be able to discuss it more thoroughly. But uh, once we've said that, reintroducing uh, infiltration systems has become more and more of a trend and uh, an evidence every time we have um, uh, urban projects. One of the main uh, uh, partners with whom we work with uh, in Source Urbain are cities, uh, municipalities, and there is not one project, even if it's a very minimal uh, project, where they, do not, they don't have uh, a thought or um, a way of thinking that involves vegetation or natural resources. Uh, when I say it's also a trend that affects uh, uh, rules and um, and laws, the water authority or water agencies in France have been promoting infiltration uh, of water uh, inside urban areas, again, in an effort of, of uh, um, uh, loosening up uh, the, uh, the constraints on the sewage system, but also reintroducing it in a more uh, sustainable uh, way of, of uh, absorbing water uh, and getting, um, getting rid of it in a certain kind of way. Just to go through a few examples before uh, talking about our solutions in, in social ban and maybe developing one particular project where we have some very strong R&D uh, perspectives. Um, I wanted to talk about one example that has been deployed. Uh, I, I think it's been a version of it has been deployed in many cities and in many areas, but in Lyon in particular, uh, they have developed, they have uh, installed and and they are still following up the principle of the rain tree. It's very simple. It's um, the observation that in our urban environments, on the driveways, on the sidewalks, there are a certain number of trees, there are a certain number of vegetation. And on the other hand, if you look at the, uh, the gutter uh, from the road, we realize that whenever it rains, the resource that could be crucial and it could help the development of plants and trees is actually pushed away in our sewage system. So uh, the whole idea is Get rid of um, uh, get 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 rid of the um, of the borders that will actually prevent water from uh, being reintroduced in this uh, green area. And eventually, if it's uh, treatment issues or if it's uh, management issues, reintroducing actually have a combination um, uh, a bridge between the world of water management and the world of landscaping in certain kind of way. We realize that. Uh, natural uh, based solutions to to do some water treatment exist and might as well use it uh, to uh, to have a more virtuous uh, usage and reintroduce the um, the watering uh, performance whenever there is a, a, a rain period of course huh? and on the other hand uh, for the plants and the trees we are able uh, to uh, to have a more uh, more efficient watering process in another kind of way, but very similar, and this will actually help me to introduce our solution, uh, the Stockholm system. Unlike its name, I have heard so many presentations uh, from a solution developed in, in Geneva. So if we have some some uh, some participants that are from Switzerland, maybe you guys uh, have have seen the system and um, have been able to appreciate the results. But this is pretty much on the scale of a street 
of a whole neighborhood, reintroducing uh, the recuperation of rainwater from uh, roads, from the roadways, and having it brought on the sideway, on the on, almost on the walkway, where we have all the vegetation, where we have all the trees. As you can see, when, when I meant it was a bridge uh, between water management and landscaping, it's really the idea of using the existing infrastructure and uh, pretty much exploiting this existing infrastructure to add uh, a green and a natural based solution uh, into it. Not only will we be able to uh, have a better nature in the city, we'll be able to have a more cool, uh, a cooling effect uh, for people living in it, and we are pretty much all concerned about it. And then in case of excess, uh, and uh, like we've had these a few, few last days and weeks in France, in case of very strong rain, we're still able to use and exploit the existing sewage uh, system to evacuate all these uh, excess of water. But what is interesting here that I wanted to introduce is the fact that on the bottom part uh, of the uh, of the of the view, we actually have uh, some kind of waterproof system that will retain water. So this means that in terms of usage, we are able to ensure a certain usage usage of this resource in uh, in uh, what was not necessarily in our nat natural environments, urban environments, but become uh, natural environments. It's exactly the same principle that uh, I want to reintroduce here with uh, with, with our, one of our solutions. Uh, so the whole idea, and it's in a smaller scale, is being able to adapt and uh, fix ourselves uh, into the existing infrastructure, gutter, um, uh, 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 dr dr draining areas, um, walkways, uh, driveways, etc., where the water will actually be brought into our uh, solution. On the bottom part, you can see some storage, uh, a, a storage part, a storage area that will fill up whenever there is a rain episode. And then on a continuous uh, effect, we have this water that is reintroduced into the, 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 the vegetated area, the soil and the, uh, the roots of the plants, uh, which ensures their watering process. And depending on the dimension, depending on where we'll be uh, installing, we adapt our solution so that the watering effect can be ensured on large uh, periods of time, sometimes up to three months. Usually uh, over three months, we always have an episode of rain or, uh, uh, or storm or whatever episode we have that can recharge the, the storing level. And then the other effect that, uh, that I want to um, talk about is the cooling effect thanks to natural based solution. The fact that we reintroduce water on a continuous um, level to the soil not only ensures the watering uh, aspect of the plants, but also boosts uh, the phenomenon of uh, evapotranspiration. The fact that a plant will consume the water and sweat it, and also the fact that the soil will uh, will get wet and be able to promote um, the, the uh, evaporation uh, part of it to cool down uh, urban heat waves, urban heat spots that we uh, that we have. Just to give you a few uh, figures, and uh, I um, I purposely put on some figures that can be uh, that can be uh, a bit appealing. So uh, if you guys have any questions about it, I'll be more than happy to discuss it, uh, over it. But uh, we followed a few studies uh, from laboratories, from uh, uh, governmental instances that try to measure this phenomenon of uh, evapotranspiration. Not only we are, uh, we are sure that it is under-evaluated, but also we want to show that by promoting nature-based solutions, we're able to boost this uh, phenomenon, thus cool, uh, really having a cool uh, cooling effect in urban areas. Uh, in the first part, the, the three first columns that uh, I wanted to display here, we had some uh, evapotranspiration um, uh, figures regarding green roofs, but um, very with very thin layers of soil and also with uh, only a, um, uh, um, a monoculture, only one kind of plant uh, that, uh, that has been measured. More and more, uh, we see other solutions that uh, come by uh, with green roof uh, solutions. Um, for instance, with storage solution. 
And we realized that a bit like the solution that I de uh, described just, just before, by storing water on roof areas, on vegetative areas, and by bringing this water on a continuous uh, effect has, of course, uh, a multiplying effect on the evapotranspiration. And in uh, the herb, our product that we call the Urban Rain Garden, uh, not only we are able to uh, multiply, but almost uh, go further on this, um, on this level because of the continuous effect, because of the multiplicity of, uh, of nature, uh, of the plants, and also the formula on the soil. We deliberately take uh, a formula of soil that is able to absorb and uh, add a lot of air uh in, into it so which will actually promote the uh the evaporation part and also um the way of measuring things is by having uh, uh by measuring the water level that is stored underground which means that we are not able to say precisely today which part of this evapotranspiration is actually consumed by the soil or by the plant but the only way out of the storage part is through the soil and the plants. So very difficult to tell which part is the consumption of the plant. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, this means that there is a, uh, a reintroduction of this resource in terms of uh, uh, vapor, in terms of vapor into, uh, into the environment. And this is why we want to have a focus on this aspect of, of our product to be able to measure uh, the, the level of freshness that we can, uh, that we can reintroduce. Uh, just to give you an overview, but uh, I think uh, you pretty much understood the whole idea of this uh, product that is very modular, that can be adapted in uh, regarding the uh, the region of the planet where we are, regarding the usage in terms of uh, human activity, or even in terms of, uh, of impact either on the landscaping uh, world or the cooling world. We want to show that by using the existing infrastructure without having to do a lot of work, we're able to adapt and we're able to reintroduce these passive irrigation systems into our daily lives and also having this um, pretty much, uh, well, we, we, we like to say it's a cool effect because having more green areas is part of our part of our mission. Huh? Um, the, the example I wanted to go to present to you in particular is uh, one example, one project that we had this summer. And the reason I wanted to talk about it is because there is a large program. Uh, we are being followed for the three next years uh, by uh, laboratories and uh, governmental instances to measure the effect of uh, of cooling uh, cooling by evapotranspiration. Uh, here you see there's a, a school playground where not only we will be uh, gathering. The, the initial plan was to gather water from the roof uh, of the um, of the school, but then we realized well uh, if we want to push the the reflection a bit further, not only can we gather water from the roof of the building, the buildings, because there's also uh, the small uh, school uh, um, uh, covered schoolyard that you see uh, behind but might as well try to use the modularity of our solution and combine it with others. So for instance, the whole yard, the whole schoolyard has been replaced by uh, a drainage uh, asphalt. So uh, whenever the rain falls uh, on it, it is infiltrated, but is, uh, it is also connected uh, to, uh, to, the three, um, uh, to the three infrastructures where we install our solution. So this means that in terms of water management, in sort of uh, sewage evacuation, we completely disconnected uh, water from it. We are still able to use it in case of excessive rain and in case of storms, because of course, any, any kind of dimensioning uh, cannot be predicted, especially with the effects of climate change. But um, pretty much every aspect of the project has been thought as to uh, reintroduce and infiltrate water into the system. So if we have a focus on water falling down on, the, on a schoolyard, it will be infiltrated. And anything uh, in excess from the roof or even from the playground will be uh, pushed into the three infrastructures that we installed. Now, because I told I, I told you that we will be measuring this effect over the three next years, um, there is actually a playground that is um, identical to this one on the other side of this um, of the school 
that that will be uh, set up as an example. This will be the uh, the element of comparison where we'll be able to measure how much freshness or how much cooling effect this kind of infrastructure can have compared, let's say, to a regular one. So we realize that more and more, uh, when we talk about irrigation system in urban areas, uh, the first uh, reflex from for everyone is talk about nature, talk about landscaping. But we also realize that um, more and more with the issues that we'll be facing with heat waves uh, in our urban areas, if we're able to promote a certain level of freshness and uh, sell a level of cooling uh, for, for our urban areas, this can also be something very interesting because well, um, there's a lot of data that, that exists now, but um, in urban areas, if we have more than a few degrees, it can be associated to a certain number of additional uh, uh, death uh, from uh, elderly people, from uh, people who are more fragile uh, to, these, uh, to these effects. So by cooling uh, this effect, not only, oops, sorry, uh, not only uh, are we able to um, uh, to have a more green and uh, a more eco-friendly uh, eco uh, solution in our environments, but also uh, we are able to serve, let's say, our, our resilience, the city's resilience uh, facing uh, all the effects of climate change. So over the few years, we'll be measuring water levels, we'll be measuring temperatures, not, not temperatures that we measure with a thermometer, huh? it's, a, it's the combination of a few uh, uh, phenomenon that we'll be measuring to see the impact on our, uh, uh, on the, let's say, uh, uh, temperature, um, uh, body temperature, uh, human, uh, um, uh, how, how we feel temperature from, from, from this, uh, uh, from this um, kind of installation and new way of uh, of thinking things. Um, thank you very much for your time. I think I'm pretty much uh, within uh, within what I, what I had. So please feel free to ask any questions, uh, especially if you want to go into some details or if you want to have maybe more feedbacks of what we've done and how we imagine the future of uh, urban development. And uh, I hope you share our ideas that this future development cannot be done without reintroducing the irrigation systems into our daily lives, especially for nature. Thank you, Nicola. Oh, thank you very much. I think there is a question waiting for you, the first one in the chat. So you yes. may have a look at it from Robert, and then we'll open this, uh, we, we'll continue from there with questions. So I actually have to stop sharing my screen. Sorry about that. Uh, oh, sorry. Ah, this, uh, yes, this is a very good question because um, um, since our solution is something that stores water and um, actually uh, uh, is not in line with some policies that will infiltrate water uh, in uh, in natural grounds, we we often had uh, the question about what well, what about reintroducing the infiltration of water, but that is um, that is dirty uh all all the water that uh, go, rolls down on uh, on roadways is full of uh, uh of petrol uh oil uh heavy metals all those kind of things so being able to stop this pollution is also one uh, um, one very important aspect of being able to infiltrate water and within our uh, solution, we always have this in mind. So we have had projects where we uh, replace parking spots, for instance, and all the overflowing water into our um, into our system that wanted to be infiltrated by the client. We we, we told him that we need to introduce, uh, uh, um, let's say, a, a water treatment solution inside uh, inside of this infrastructure. So this means that we had to uh, add, put some additives into the soil so that we can have some uh, um, blockage uh, inside within our installation, uh, within our infrastructure to avoid having um, uh, polluted water infiltrated elsewhere. So water purification is indeed something that we'll, we will look into every time we have a deployment. 
when we gather water from the roof, it's something quite simple. So it's pretty much a pretreatment that uh, that is involved. But whenever it's a water uh, that is um, uh, that is polluted a bit more, uh, we we, have, we tend to uh, to introduce more um, uh, more solutions. For instance, we had a project in uh, in the south of France where we wanted to uh, combine our solution with a more traditional. Uh, solution of uh, water treatment in um, uh, in in both cleaning areas. I'm sorry, I don't have the the exact term, but uh, where a lot of chemicals were used. So this means that uh, there are certain levels that we have to respect. There are certain uh, things that we have to uh, um, get rid of before reintroducing water into its uh, natural environment. And sometimes natural based solution can be uh, can be something uh, quite um, uh, quite interesting, especially when we want to get rid of nitrates or uh, phosphorates uh, for plants, which is something good, but for nature, not necessarily. So uh, water treatment is indeed something that has to be looked into um, before uh, entering on the ground storage. When we ask the questions and we, we challenge, uh, uh, for example, um, uh, water agencies in France, usually they don't know uh, what are the consequences. And I think it's very different from an area or another or a city on a, or another. Uh, so I think they sometimes they only have directives and they try to follow it uh, in terms of a long term strategy. But uh, maybe time will tell us that it's not necessarily something that had to be done. Huh? <laughs> uh, uh, this, this there is scenario. a question from Bruno. You have seen it. Do you yes, have uh, examples of the quantity of water that has been used by systems like yours according to slide eight? Slide eight. So, OK, so that uh, uh, just as a reminder, that's the table with the evapotranspiration um, uh, comparison and uh, the um, the ratio of surface that we usually use uh, on our systems. That was what we displayed in this table is between four to six. We've pushed it up to 10, so this means uh, for 100 square meters of, uh, of uh, roof or road or uh, walkway uh, gathered, we have pretty much 10 square meters of, um, of installation uh, uh, that has been um, deployed and used. And the water, uh, the volumes of water that we uh, that we are able to save, is usually uh, I'll pretty much answer with a, per with a percentage because uh, it's pretty much between uh, sixty and uh, ninety percent of water that has been gathered. So it depends, of course, on where we install it. We have had, we've had some installations in the north area of France where we have a lot more rain than in uh, the southern parts of the country. Um, so it's not necessarily the same volumes. When we have less water, we are able to have a better uh, 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 better savings in terms of volumes of water. So we are more closer to 90% or more, whereas where we have a lot of water, uh, we our system is not able to, um, to, uh, to treat and to uh, pr uh, process uh, large volumes on very short uh, periods of time since it's plant-based and natural-based uh, solution. Also. So um, uh, I have a, I see another question from Calgary. Did we, uh, there's no active it's clear irrigation. There's no active irrigation in your uh, system. Water it, movement is passive through capillary action, correct? Exactly, exactly. Okay. And uh, depending on uh, on the formulas that we have, uh, we have uh, uh, solutions that uh, promote that are more efficient in terms of capillarity or not. But um, uh, the reason I'm answering this way is because we have not yet deployed uh, a, a, a version of the project where irrigation is a bit more important in our solution. We can see this uh, storage part as a reserve for the for the plants that are in the soil that is directly on top of it but it can also be something um uh, it can also be a storage for other uh, solutions that are next to it um i'm thinking uh, we've had projects where uh they want to use our storage system as a um, as a refilling uh as a refilling purpose they can refill a tank and use it all in the close area of our uh, of our solution or they can 
install irrigation systems that will naturally or uh, more automatically uh, reintroduce water all around it. Um, thinking of Calgary, because I had a chance uh, to go there a few years ago, I'm thinking that in winter areas, uh, water storage or irrigation of the stored water can maybe be a bit complicated because of a, uh, the very, very cold weather you guys have uh, all the way up there. Um, but yes, we tend to use the capillarity pro um, uh, properties of our, uh, of our products uh, as much as possible to have it in a passive way, but it can also be through drains uh, um, or uh, 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 drains and uh, uh, parts that will overflow to irrigate other parts of uh, or other areas. Huh? Uh, experience by Aquatiris in Strasbourg. Yes, of Absolutely. course. We uh, water treatment on roof. Uh, Aquatiris. We met with them. Very interesting. Very very uh, interesting solution. And again, I think that uh, by by these few questions we already had, it it underlines um, the importance of. Uh, the combination of the, com uh, the the way that our uh, solutions are, um, are are maybe complementary one to each other uh, can help one one, one and each other uh, in in all this long term vision of reintroducing water in terms of irrigation and in terms of uh, landscaping uh, after all. We have uh, question from Bruno regarding the cooling effect. Did you measure? Yes. Did you measure it? We are measuring it. We are yeah. measuring it because um, uh, until today, it had, we, we realized that one of the values that uh, was uh, was more and more uh, sought through is um, the vegetation is saving uh, uh, drink drinkable water, uh, has saving um, effort, human material efforts in terms of uh, automatic watering, and now that we realize that. Not necessarily this year, but the two last years, for example, when we had very strong heat waves, it was a real issue for the population. It, be, it has become an issue for um, uh, the politics. Uh, this cooling uh, effect, we knew about it, we knew it worked, but we never really measured it. So there are uh, actually three to four, pro four projects today that we have deployed this summer that will aim to measure uh, this cooling effect. So uh, hopefully uh, next summer, I will be able to uh, to share more uh, more uh, tangible uh, results in terms of, uh, of freshness throughout these installations. And I think in the audience, uh, there are some people that are following up some uh, some uh, examples, some experiments. I'm, again, I'm, th I'm talking about in Lyon, there's this uh, famous street, uh, Rue Garibaldi, where um, a lot of this uh, reintroducing water and irrigation system to water trees is being followed very closely uh, by our, some of our colleagues. So um, I think more and more we'll be able to generate data, share all this information and, and, and come up with more interesting uh, uh, aspects of this cooling effect. I think Moshi has something. And to I see, yeah, Moshi has raised his hand. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, thanks, Nico. Nicola. Um, regarding the, the, the political aspect of what you're saying, because uh, um, uh, you mentioned that there are trends. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit about this? Is it still a trend? Like if you want to be a, a cool uh, architectural office uh, uh, to do things in the city that are very nice for the catalog, or is it really, or you feel that there is a movement, like uh, it's not only nice to have, like the, the, the decision makers and the municipalities, the public players are mm -hmm. taking more and more parts like in it, in it's, France it's, and outside if you have. No yeah, it's, it's, uh, the way I see it, it's really on a um, on, on a very strong uh, level because of course uh, I, I think for uh, uh, let's say the politics that want to be elected it's very nice to say okay we will reintroduce nature in our urban environment we will have trees everywhere everything will be green it has a very uh, nice marketing um, aspect to it but in a more uh, in a more serious way. Uh, we see, for example, a lot of major cities, um, for example, we are in the Paris uh, area, not too far from Paris, and I followed some, some of our partners who are trying to have construction works inside, uh, inside the city of Paris, 
and um, there is a there is a, um, a, a law document uh, papers that are that are ur urban directions that are uh, produced by the city that uh, are compulsory for any type of uh, any type of work rather if it's a new construction or a renewing construction and uh, it, it has become compulsory uh, to prove that you're able to uh, use water within uh, within your, um, your your installation, your project. I've also had some example with very big promoters. Uh, I'm talking about some 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 very big names uh, that promote uh, hundreds of buildings every year. They have come to us saying, okay, well, our city uh, has decided that we are no longer able uh, to connect our gutters to the sewage system and we are obliged to come up with the solution to reintroduce water and use water within the building uh, because there's no other way around and sometimes uh, there are cities where we have uh, we have grounds we have soils that are not able to infiltrate water very efficiently some other parts are very uh, sandy. We have a very sandy soil, so it's quite easy. And when it's not possible, uh, it's a real issue. So uh, it's. I think it's maybe a, a good thing that uh, there is this new obligation. Uh, I think that it will force uh, maybe the promoters and uh, and constructions uh, construction companies to come up with new solutions uh, to be able to. Um, uh, to use this water and this is where we can actually help them to see well uh, storage not only for plants huh, but sometimes also we have a project where we can combine our storage uh, solution with a uh, storage for uh, uh, for toilet use uh, flushing down the toilet with rainwater can ensure uh, its uh, uh, its uh, its consumption and on the other hand, uh, it, it has become it has become compulsory throughout throughout this impulsion of let's say big uh, cities. We see that this trend is uh, is going further away because more and more cities far from Paris today um, have to uh, do, do actually do the same, and pretty much in any any area of uh, of the country. Okay. Thank you. There is a remark from Bruno regarding cooling effect. A PhD from INRAE will be supported next December on question of measurement and modelization. Hmm. Very interesting. Good. Very good. Uh, <laughs> by, by the way, Nicola, do you have uh, like two, two more comments or questions on this one? Uh, although I'm coming from the agricultural uh, program, but um, um, did you try to implement the solution in the Mediterranean uh, climate, like in a, like where when we talk about dry period? Because you mentioned mm -hmm. at the beginning that up to three months you can preserve the water, and there is mm -hmm. always like episodes of uh, rain. Well, if we're looking for the future and we we're seeing the the heat waves and the episodes today, we cannot count on this if we want to have a green cities or outside of the marketing part of it. But if we really want to keep it green, we must have this experience, again, this experience, and we must involve, I guess, this kind of solution with active irrigation, at least as plan B, or at least a complementary plan, because otherwise summertime Indeed. will not survive. Um, indeed, and uh, unfortunately, most of our project are um, happen in the summer, for instance. So we, we w when it's the case, we actually uh, tell the um, uh, the construction company who who works with us not to put the plants uh, during the summer, and usually they have to wait a few months before installing them in uh, in the winter. This would not only help the plants to survive, let's say, a very uh, difficult time, but it also helps them uh, go through um, uh, spring and develop their roots so that um, the roots will actually go further down the soil to get into this, uh, let's say, the, the, the more uh, a wet part of the of the soil to uh, to to benefit from from our solution. But indeed, we've we we often had the case of asking ourselves, okay, so the closer we get to uh, the south part of the uh, of any area uh, of the um, of the northern hemisphere, we'll be uh, confronted to longer period of times in terms of uh, droughts, in terms of very strong uh, temperatures. We uh, most of our installations 
today are in the Paris area, general Paris area. I think it's more by a uh, proximity that has been the case. But uh, this year we have a few projects that are a bit more south. And next year we have a, um, at least two projects that will be happening in the south of France where we'll possibly uh, we will have to work on a new formula. Like I said, we have something that can be modular and that can be adapted rather in terms of materials, rather in terms of um, uh, quantity of water that is gathered. So uh, we always have we always have a critical uh, vision of it. So if we have to adapt something, it will be done. But on the other hand, if let's say we, we get to periods of time where we have up to four months without any single drop of water uh, coming from the rain, uh, we, we, we had the example the summer of 2022, we had up to seven weeks without a significant rain uh, over the country on an, air, on, on an average. Huh? Um, during the seven weeks, we had uh, a lot of plants actually died in, let's say, the uh, any kind of environment. Uh, we had the example of uh, parts of uh, the country that had to be irrigated. Uh, they had to bring truckloads of, uh, of fresh water for people to, to consume. Uh, and over these seven weeks, our insulate by the time we had up to uh, almost 10 uh, installations and our 10 installation did not need to be watered and the plants actually survived over the time. So I almost want to say that if we have uh, up to four we uh, months of droughts, uh, it is possible that our plants will not will suffer and will, will actually dry off, but it will actually be the case in a lot of different areas. So if we are able to irrigate uh, more efficiently by uh, act um, additional storage system or additional irrigation systems, it could actually be uh, a, a viable solution. Mm, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, other questions about this presentation? No? I've got many more, but I'm going to keep it next time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, okay. okay. Good. Thank you. <laughs> um, if no more, no other questions arise. Well, uh, anyway, you're gonna have the the everyone's gonna have the presentation, uh, right? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the presentation will be published in the in our website, and you will be able to. I guess that you can see you can see the contact uh, uh, details, and you can uh, make contact directly with Nicola. Nicola, thank you very much for your very interesting presentation on the philosophy of the solutions. We could have uh, continued speaking a lot. Talking the length on this one. So stay with us uh, to the next part uh, of, um, of, uh, of this forum, which is uh, the part of the innovation technology. And Dorothe, I, I saw that you came in and out. You're here with us today. Is now are you are you present? I'm certainly great. So Dorothe Zutafel. Please, the floor is yours if you would like to, to present. I think uh, yeah. Dorothe prefers to present her slides, no? Is what you told me? Yes. Uh, okay. Wait a second. Can I, share the I will try to. Okay. <laughs> while while uh, Dorothea is uh, is preparing his uh, slideshow, uh, I will just uh, call for. Uh, your help, uh, everyone, to uh, propose a subject for future forum. Well, uh, I have a number <laughs> in uh, in reserve, but okay. uh, maybe you are uh, you have some that uh, could be of interest for you and uh, for the others. So please uh, do not hesitate to send uh, an email uh, to uh, to Fleur at the okay. communication uh, email address and. Uh, we will be uh, delighted to uh, try to answer to your questions. Thank you. Uh, do you see the presentation? Yes. Super. Great. Then, yes. then I will start. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to talk about subsurface irrigation and water storage technologies uh, for greening and water saving in the gardening and landscaping sector. Um, I want to start with uh, a short input about conventional surface irrigation, 
then followed by climate change and consequences for plants, potential solutions like subsurface irrigation, subsurface uh, textile irrigation systems, compare this with the, with the surface uh, irrigation system, then compare the different subsurface textile system, and the last point would be subsurface textile water storage and distribution uh, systems. So let's start with conventional surface irrigation with uh, sprinklers or trippers. Advantages, of course, um, are that they are cost effective. You can visual check if there is a, is a water outcoming. It's easy to automatize automatize it's flexible and it is it's very easy to renew the disadvantage is uh, what also Nicolas mentioned in his presentation um, uh, that uh, you use uh, valuable drinking water and of course you have evaporation if you if the irrigation is from surface sometimes the wind is drifting the water away Trip tubes and pop-up sprinklers get sometimes damaged by UV uh, or heavy loads or vandalism. It's uh, sometimes the water consumption could be uh, high. Mowing or walking is not possible during irrigation. You have the risk of surface felting with soil compaction and regarding to climate change. Um, yeah, that's, that's really an issue if um, uh, uh, surface irrigation um, eco-friendly enough for uh, irrigate, uh, irrigating uh, our plants. So there are some studies um, which, which say that 2024 will end up as the warmest year on record. And of course, this has consequences uh, for our plants. They suffer uh, from, from, from and dry off. So a potential uh, solution could be subsurface irrigation. There are two main options on the market, either subsurface drip irrigation, sometimes in combination with hydrogels, and this is mostly used in the agriculture. Or the second option are subsurface textile irrigation systems, which are mostly used in the gardening and landscaping. And uh, this is, I want to talk uh, now more in detail. For uh, subsurface uh, textile irrigation systems, normally uh, usually geotextile non wounds with an air void content of 80 to 90 percent are used. So, really, a lot of water can be stored internally in these pores and distributed capillary. And some of these non wounds store more than 10 liter water per kilo. Yeah. Usually, usually they are installed at root depths, so uh, they can use the water really effectively. The drip irrigation tubes are mostly protected by a non woven covering so that the roots cannot grow in. And in the case of this coating of the tubes, the water is distributed along the coating and transferred to the underlying non-woven uh, and distributed over the surface. There are very various options for installing the tube. The first is you embed it between two full service textiles shown in graph one, or it's individually wrapped and placed on either a full service fleece uh, shown in graph two, or on a fleece net shown in graph three. Here you can see two uh, different subsurface textile irrigation systems 
the first one is a full uh, mat with a non with non coated tubes on a is a roof greening example, and here the tubes are placed directly on the drainage layer. The second one is a net fleece with coated drip irrigation tubes, also a roof greening example. And here the system uh, could be placed because it's a net form uh, at root level and not directly on the drainage layer. This is an enlarge enlargement of the non-woven material. And you can see that the air void is uh, quite high. It's normally around 80 to 90 percent. And in the open interconnected pores, an extremely large amount of air and water can be stored. And as I've said before, one, some of the materials, one kilo, store up to 10 liters of water. So that's really a, a high uh, water storage capacity. Normally, you use polypropylene or polyester. So um, if I try to compare subsurface textile irrigation with surface irrigation, there are, of course, advantages and disadvantages. Some studies says, for example, that the water savings uh, with, um, so, uh, with subsurface uh, irrigation compared to spray irrigation in very hot countries uh, where the water already evaporates in the air or you have much wind. Um, and normally, and in European climates, the savings with sprinkler irrigation are, of course, lower with high variation, I have to say, and even less with service trip irrigation. Uh, one of the advantage of uh, service uh, subsurface irrigation is that the area can also be used, played, uh, or mowed during irrigation. You have less matting, weeds, and water locking on the surface. So this reduces uh, maintenance costs, evaporation, and service runoff on slopes. And even and effective water distribution um, is really directly at root level. So you have less seepage loss, um, the, uh, you have a protection so, um, uh, of the drip irrigation tubes, so uh, vandalism is not possible. Less fertilizers are required, as the fertilizers can be really applied precisely to the roots. And you can, so the, the distance between the tubes can be significantly increased. Uh, with this uh, dis distribution um, textile, so you can in enlarge it uh, from 50 to 60, per, uh, 60 centimeter. The disadvantages uh, are, of course, higher initial costs. It's not flexible uh, when you change the plants. You don't have a visual control, so therefore you need uh, moisture sensors to measure if the system really works. You have to be careful uh, if you do aerification. No. And uh, sometimes uh, you need initial subsurface watering uh, until the roots are deep enough and they are docking onto the material. So now I want to move to compare the different subsurface systems. Uh, the first uh, would be a drip irrigation tube, either coated or not, for subsurface irrigation. Uh, both are more sustainable alter alternative to con conventional surface drip irrigation because the water is used more effectively and reduces evaporation. So the water is really de delivered directly to the roots of the plants. So when we compare the drip irrigation uh, tube uh, with, with the covering and with not, um, 
I have to mention that the tube protection um, from root, uh, root ingrowth uh, is uh, uh, mechanically and it's a protective non woven covering. Also, the protective non woven covering distributes the water really immediately. So, the roots uh, do not know where to attack. So, maybe, or in other words, they are confused. So, they don't know um, where is the water. So, uh, you have really a protection um, against this uh, root ingrowth. The geotextile uh, protective non wounds prevent also uh, blockages caused uh, by fine particles. You have less seepage loss due uh, to the distribution in the cover. The water contact, the water soil contact is uh, increased a thousandfold by the water distribution in the non woven covering and significantly a better water distribution in system with non wovens especially when you have mixed soil conditions. The disadvantages uh, of these um, drip irrigation tubes are higher costs and uh, when you uh, have this non woven covering, this coating, um, the weight of the coating can be even greater than, the, than that of the tube. Uh, a second uh, option um, of um, uh, textile uh, subsurface uh, sub uh, systems are full service systems um, in which irrigation tubes are needled between two uh, geotextile. They are available on the market in Europe for around 30 years. In some cases, uh, uh, also additional water storage elements are used between the two layers. Then uh, there are also other full service variants on the market where the tubes are sewn in between two layers of the non woven material or the tubes are laid or fixed on a full service distribution fleece with or without a non woven coating. I suppose it's possible. Um, full service systems must be installed relatively precisely at root depth, so you don't have um, much opportunities. You have to really place it at a uh, root depth. Um, and the full service variants are quite easy to install for wide base areas with suitable widths, for example, between tram or train tracks, like the picture uh, uh, below. Uh, but in the event of overwatering, the water flows downwards um, as the roots cannot reach cannot reach it. And on slopes, the full, is, full service version can create a sliding layer, sometimes on which the floor slips on the wet fleece. So a newer uh, and more cost effective system is a non woven net. Uh, the water uh, distribution net only uh, needs about approximately 25 to 35% of the total area. So um, this results in significant changes compared to full service variants. Oh. So you don't have a barrier effect. The roots can really pass through the net and dock onto the material mesh all around. So really 100% of the water stored in the material is available, available for the plants, including also the underside of the fleece, which is not the case with full uh, service systems. The installation depth um, is uh, much more flexible. So if you have, for example, a, a lawn, you put it higher, roughly 10 centimeters underground. And if you have a, uh, a tree, you put it deeper, so you can really put it in a three-dimensional form. It's very flexible, so it can uh, even be wrapped around the root ball of trees. 
also which it is shown in the picture below. The full service variants are easy to install for consistently wide space areas with suitable width. Uh, but however, the, the net variant has clear advantages when you have small or somewhat more complicated floor areas. And the tubes can be laid parallel or like a, a, a floor heating system in a, in a meandering way on the net. And the tube, tube space is approximately 50 to 60 centimeter. The full service variants bounce, bounce slightly under lo load. The net version does not, as the load is really transferred downwards via the spaces between the net. This means um, that, for example, the water stored in the non-woven material on a soccer pitch is partially squeezed out downwards when a player runs over it in the full service version, but this is not the case in the net version. Even in the event of overwatering, the water drains away downwards with the full service variant, as the roots cannot reach it, whereas this is not the case with the net variant. Also on slopes, the full service ver version quickly creates um, a sliding layer where the soil slides on the wet fleece. Uh, the net variant um, interlocks with both the soil and also the roots and can therefore be installed on much steeper slopes than the full variant. In addition, with this meander effect, this means that on a slope the water is held much better uh, in this net variant. So, and, and the last one, this is maybe also a, a combination with the Spong, Spong City. Um, Nicolas um, presented. Um, so, um, you can use these textile systems also without the drip irrigation tube, also just the textile, either in a strip form which you put at root level uh, so the substrate is improved uh, you have loosened compacted soil uh, aeration and support of of the vegetation of the plants the water storage capacity is significantly increased so the plants can access all the water stored in the non woven material and if they are getting dry they are just pulling out the water or um, the same function is uh, a net uh, with really with, which stores the water but also distributes the water. If you have larger areas, it's very flexible. The roots can uh, dock around the material um, and it's quite easy to install especially for, for trees, you just put the net around the root ball. Especially the issue of rains is that the raining intervals are very short. So the raining water is just laying in the top, uh, in the top layer of the soil and it is not moving to the trees, to the, to the roots of the trees. But with this net, the water is really distributed directly uh, to the um, roots of the plants. Yes, thank you for your attention. Uh, this was my presentation. <laughs> so if you have any questions, please, uh, you are welcome. Thank you, Dorothee. Questions from the audience? by raising hands or by in the chat. Um, for, from my side, uh, Dorothy, I, I'd like to make the link between these two presentations uh, with the same question, um, because you're facing, uh, you're selling a product, you're facing clients. The trend that you that you see in the in areas, maybe the, your experience a little, little bit different than the French one. Uh, the, Hello? Yes. 
Oui. Can you hear? Très bien. Je viens de découvrir ce que c'était qu'un étançon. Mm. C'est yeah. le, le nom technique de ce que nous, on appelle tout bêtement uh. une dent sous-soleuse. Ouais. Le nom sexy quand tu es quelqu'un qui a du vocabulaire, c'est un étançon. Mm. Ouais. J'ai trouvé ça en essayant de comprendre. Ok, ouais. euh, Mister Dutail, you could you switch off your mic? Oh, ok, that's good, yeah. That was switch off, yeah. Okay. Sorry, Moshe. Uh... Yeah, so just about the, about the, the, the demand. The, about experience, the... the experience in, uh, so my, my experience uh, uh -huh. about, um, now, Of course, um, as uh, Nicolas mentioned, it's it's also politically driven. You know, it's nice to have green cities, and uh, before the election, uh, no question. <laughs> But my experience in Vienna, for example, also they are really forcing this, especially trees. So in 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 many cities. Uh, Um, we lose uh, parking spaces and they are uh, installing trees, really many trees, um, also in the rest of Austria and um, also in other cities where I've been in Europe. I have the, have the feeling that uh, it's getting hotter and hotter. Uh, we have these heat waves and you really need especially trees in cities for the cooling also it's also it's not it's not only uh politically driven it, i've really um also the the spawn the spunk um uh city is a topic in vienna um it's but it's quite expensive yeah um So uh, maybe a combination uh, <laughs> with our products. Uh, maybe we can talk afterwards. Uh, Nicolas could be an option. <laughs> Thanks, Dorothea. Thank you. I think we have could ask you a question. Yeah. Yeah. We have a question of Bruno in the chat. Um, Uh, what is the extra cost of such a system compared to surface system? And what is the average life duration? What is the extra cost of such system compared to surface system? And what is the average life duration? Uh, yeah, so there are for the uh, subsurface irrigation systems, uh, they are with uh, with non bubbles normally, as I said, they are made out of polypropylene. So uh, if it's placed underground, this stays more or less forever. Uh, it's not good to have contact with UV, as the material doesn't like uh, sun. So um, It as the cost depends on the on the system. I would say five to 20 uh, euro per square meter uh, for the subsurface system, but it depends um, uh, which system you use. And if you want and how to remove it, remove it uh, from the soil. Um, as the I have just experience with the net. This is quite easy to remove it and you can also reuse it. Yeah. Uh, so tear, you tear it out and you can reuse it for other applications. For the full systems, maybe the other um, the others can, uh, can share their experience. Uh, this I don't know. Okay. Does this system face lowering of storage potential with time? No, no. Uh, it's um, the the capacity uh, uh, stays like it is okay. at the beginning. Yeah. Is, there now, is there any other question for uh, Dorothea mm -hmm. in the chat or? You can also raise your hand. No, it looks like that. Uh, 
there are no more questions. <laughs> All righty. Good. So, uh, Dorothy, thank you very much. Uh, this time you made it. Sorry for the cancellation of last time, but uh, I think it was worthwhile waiting for the presentation. I think we covered uh, uh, quite similar topics. Uh, there is a lot of interest around the uh, around the, the efficiency and the irrigation. And I see many many of our. I was looking during the conversation on the on the names and the people that are participating. I know that some of you here are quite involved in this uh, in in many aspects of. Uh, of uh, uh, measuring, uh, uh, getting uh, the full solution, circular solution, uh, as you as you provided now an example uh, uh, that this is very interesting. I think it's very interesting for the irrigation sector uh, to continue this development on looking on the whole s s water system in the city and to accumulate to, and to get there, a, there is a last yeah. question. Uh, T, someone asked if it is available in Canada. <laughs> Your solution, Dorothea. Yeah. My, also our solution or the solutions. Also, uh, this kind of solution, mm. I think. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> yes. Mm. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, Moshe. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> so uh, I think I uh, just uh, wanted to thank you uh, for uh, uh, for these uh, the two presentations. Um, and I think that now it's the it's the time uh, to 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 open the microphone if anyone would like to add uh, anything, any question, any any comment, any remark. Uh, this is your time. Uh, while waiting uh, for you, I will just maybe I will uh, begin by saying that, that I'd like to thank uh, first of all Fleur for the, for the for arranging this. Uh, uh, this event, and of course, uh, Bruno, for uh, inviting. I know that you're looking for uh, uh, interesting topics, and together, together, families of top topics from uh, different aspects of irrigation. So, uh, bravo! I think this is a this was a very nice, uh, well done today. I uh, thank you very much for this one. Um, I'd like to thank uh, the speakers uh, that are still still with us, uh, Nicola Grillo. I will continue with this, uh, with pronouncing this name this way. And Dorothe uh, Zulzbacher, thank you for your presentations and thank you everyone for your uh, participation. If any comments, please don't hesitate. This is the time. And um, if I don't see any anyone here, so I would like just to, to end this forum and to thank you all and to wish you a beautiful and quiet weekend. And see you in EMA. Don't forget, right. we're in Italy, Bologna, EMA. There is the booth of the EIA and the there. cocktail. See you there. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Okay. Bye. bye bye. And thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Yeah.